So far we've learned that powers or exponents tell us to multiply the base by a certain number of times. But what happens if that power is equal to zero? Can that even exist? What does it mean? Well, today we're going to find out. Today I'm actually going to start with the rule. When we have any number except for zero that is to the power of zero, it always equals one. So what does that mean? Well, here's some examples where the exponent is equal to zero. What it simply is saying is, if we've got two to the power of zero, that will equal one. If we've got three to the power of zero, because it's to the power of zero, it'll equal one. 5 to the power of 0 will also equal 1. 300 to the power of 0 will also equal 1. But this certainly raises a question. Why does a number to the power of 0 always equal 1? Well, to answer that question, we need to go over a couple of things that we already know. So to get an understanding of this, there are a couple of rules that we need to revisit. The first of which is that any number except for zero that divides by itself is always equal to one. So what that means is with a couple of examples, if we're dividing a number by itself, such as two divided by two, that will equal one. Likewise, three divided by itself will equal one. Five divided by itself will equal one. And, you guessed it, 300 divided by itself will equal 1. The second rule that we need to revisit is, when we're dividing two indices with the same base, we subtract the exponents. So when we apply this rule, we might have 2 to the fourth power divided by 2 to the second power. Because they've got the same base, we keep the base, but we subtract the exponents, so that's 4 subtract 2, which will be equal to 2 to the second power. Over here, we've got 3 to the power of 5 divided by 3 squared. They have the same base, so we keep the base, and we subtract the exponents, 5 subtract 2, and this will equal 3 to the third power, or 3 cubed. Now you might be wondering at this point, what does any of those two rules have to do with the power of zero? And fair enough, but I want you to consider this problem for a moment. If we've got two to the fourth power divided by two to the fourth power, we're actually dividing the same number into itself. Well, when we divide any number by itself, we know that that equals one. However, if we consider that same problem for a moment, and we apply this rule here, when dividing two indices with the same base, we subtract the exponents, it tells us that this is equal to two to the power of four subtract four. If we work that out, that's gonna be equal to two to the zeroth power. But remember, we already know that this statement is equal to one. So what that means is two to the zeroth power must also equal one. Hmm, so that was interesting. But let's consider another example for a moment. What if we have three to the seventh power divided by three to the seventh power? Well, we're dividing the top number by itself. So that means it must be equal to one. However, if we apply that rule again to the same situation, We've got the same base divided by the same base. So that means we keep that base and we subtract the exponents. So seven subtract seven is gonna be zero. So it's three to the zeroth power. But if you remember, we already know that this problem is equal to one. So what that means is three to the zeroth power must also be equal to one. Hmm, I see a pattern developing here. And that's where our rule comes from. Any number except for zero that is to the power of zero 
is always equal to 1. OK, so this rule does seem to work. Let's now apply this rule to a few problems. What if I have 8 to the 0th power? Well, anything to the power of 0 is always equal to 1. So I now know that 8 to the 0 power is equal to 1. 6 to the 0 power, the power is 0, so that will be equal to 1. This third problem here, we're actually dividing the top number by itself, so it's going to equal 1. However, to show this, we're dividing two indices that have the same base. So that means we keep that base of 2 and we subtract the exponents. So that is going to be equal to 2 to the 0th power and we know that anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. Let's now take this rule where the problem looks a little bit different. What if we have 2 to the 2nd power times 2 to the 6th power all divided by 2 to the 8th power? Well, my first step would be to add the exponents together on the top line. So I keep the base, and that's going to be 2 to the power of 2 plus 6, divided by 2 to the 8th power. 2 to the 2 plus 6 is going to be 2 to the 8th power, over 2 to the 8th power. We now subtract the exponents, so that's going to be 2 to the 8 subtract 8, which is equal to 2 to the 0th power, and we know that anything to the 0th power is equal to 1. So what about question 5 here, where we've got a fraction to the 0th power? Well, a fraction is still a number, and any number that is to the power of 0 is always equal to 1. So a half to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So what about question 6, where we've got 2 times 7 divided by 8, all to the power of 0? Well, any number that is not 0, is to the power of 0 is always equal to 1. Now I can see inside the brackets here that when I simplify that, that that is not going to be equal to 0. So what that means is this is a number to the power of 0. So it equals 1. So let's recap. If I've got any number except the 0 that is to the power of 0, it is always equal to 1. Now you might be wondering why I haven't talked about this exception. It's something that I want to cover at a later stage. But for now, I want you to practice some problems. So here are six problems that I want you to simplify. But I want you to be very careful because when you simplify these, not all of them will end up to the power of zero.